Howdy everybody, Steve here, KM9G. If you are watching this on release day, then it's been a long time since I've seen a Wolf River Coils video out there and I'm gonna do one of my own. And if you are watching this not on release day, welcome, glad you made it, glad you found us. Hopefully I bring something different to the table. I'm gonna show you how this thing tunes up on a bunch of different bands and then we'll try and make some contacts with it also. But first, I need to go get some wire because I don't have the requisite ground radials for this antenna. It needs three 30 foot, three 33 foot ground radials, so I need 100 feet of wire. So I brought all the materials to make up the ground radials for my ground radial connection system. And there's only two places I can think of in this area. Number one is Walmart. Ooh, and number two is Menards. Ah, both of them are my favorite places to go. So let's go get some wire. Look at this. Thirty-inch antenna. 297 at Walmart. All kinds of tools. Do they have any wire? It looks like we have house wire. That's a little too beefy for what I need. Maybe with towing or lighting and automotive or car stereos. Fuses, terminals, zip ties, wire looms. Nope, here it is. Automotive wire. 40-foot spools. Man, it'd be perfect if they had 33-foot spools. Let's find the brightest color they got. Well, they had it in red, and they had it in black. 18-gauge, 340-foot spools. Almost $8 a piece. Not the cheapest place to get it. And in case y'all were wondering, this right here is the reason why I didn't go to Menards to look for cheaper cable. $4 a gallon diesel at 11 miles per gallon ain't happening. I got some cables to make, then we'll get set up. I bring my own workbench with me to the park. It's called a tailgate. So I have my power pole crimpers. I have my wire strippers. I have my power pole ends. Guess we're going red this time. Red end on a red wire, done. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave the wire spooled up and I'm gonna put the power pole end on all three wires at once. And if you want a video on how I make my power poles, I will link it at the top up there. That's not coming off at all. Clean up all my little bits of wire mess so I don't leave them at the park. And now that I've left these all on the spool, I can unwrap them and they can all be 33 foot on a single measurement. Ta-da! And then I can jerry-rig stuff like this where I can put it on my super duty step. And then I can just pull those wires out. And I've got my 33 foot tape measure stretched out. Even when I drop it. Oh, there we go. There's one. This is pretty slick, I gotta show you this. Walmart to the rescue. Normally inside of these spools, you can like stick a pen or something, but there's this little hook and I didn't realize it, but that hook swivels. Look at that. I might have to keep these spools for another project. Done. All right, here's where it gets to be more fun. We just continue with the fun over and over again. So this is why I put power poles on my ground radials. This is the little mounting puck for the Wolf River Coils antenna. And I just made a short little pigtail to go from the screw to a power pole. And now I can hook up however many radials I want of whatever length I want, and they're all interchangeable. And I have 10 meter, five meter, 14 foot, and now 33 foot. And yes, I mixed up measurements. Y'all can figure it out, you're smart. We have the Wolf River coil itself. And this thing is just about as high quality as you can get without making a custom form. And I love the fact that they are using somewhat off the shelf components. This screws into the mounting base very carefully. It's a 3 8 24 thread like your ham sticks or your 17 foot whips or whatever that you use that has a 3 8 24 thread on the bottom of it. 
And this one I got used from another ham and these threads were all messed up. But my friend Gail, WD9HFT, took it home and somehow he was able to work his magic and get this thing re-threaded so that these things fit in, these little legs fit in real nice. So these are the short legs of the tripod and the boys over at Wolf River Coils make a longer leg version of the tripod. So now I take those radials that I just made up and I take the radial connector on the bottom and plug them into each other. Ta-da! And there you have it. We've got three radials going out in three different directions and then we have coax and I recommend having a choke on your coax so that it doesn't act as a fourth radial. But if you want it to act as a fourth radial, put that choke on the other end of the coax by the radio instead. And then the coax itself just hooks up right underneath of the antenna. Magic. Next up is a 78 inch whip. This is about six and a half foot. So it's not the typical 17 foot whip that you're used to. It's a little shorter, but the coil makes up for all of that. You can run the 17 foot whip on this. You just need to make some adjustments. So if you already have a whip, use the one you got. And then it just screws into the top. Got my splaining glasses on now because we are ready to start testing. First rule, everything affects everything. So if I am over here, right up close to the antenna, looking at my measurements, I am in the near field of the antenna and the capacitance of my body and everything affects that. So there's gonna be a lot of walking back and forth. And as I come in closer, we get even better, 3.9 at 1.8 to one SWR. And that right there is where the coil is set to, almost all the way at the bottom, which means all of this wire right here is part of the antenna. So let's see if we can get this thing tuned up a bit. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the stimulus range on the Nano VNA, because I do not need it to be from three to 15. I really need it to be from three to four. But I'm gonna center it at 3.5 megahertz. And that's gonna change the sweep characteristics a little bit. Now it says 1.4, 1 1.3 at 3.9. So if I add more, the SWR gets worse. And what you do is you just experiment by moving the coil around and it doesn't take much because now I'm at 1.9 to one SWR at 4.3 and I think I only moved it up about an inch. Let's move it back down two clicks. 4.2, keep moving down. 1.4 at 4.1, 1.1 at 4.0, 1 1.7 at 3.9. Well, I guess as I lean into it, it's 1.1 at 3.9. Let's shrink this span down more. That span is six megahertz. I don't need it to be six megahertz. Let's make it two megahertz. And you just keep moving it up and down until you get a good SWR match. I'm gonna play with it a little bit, then we'll be back. All right, I don't know how well you'll be able to see that, but 1.19 to one SWR at 3.8 megahertz. That's usable. And what I needed to do was I needed to use the entire coil every bit of it. And this will change depending on your soil conditions, the foliage on the trees around you, how much rain there's been in the last few days. Basically, go somewhere and play with it and figure it out. It's highly, highly fiddly. A little teeny tiny bit of movement will really move your SWR around to where you are trying to find yourself on the band. But that's where all the fun comes in because this is a six foot tall antenna that packs up pretty small and easy to transport. It's a little thumb screw on this side. I release the thumb screw to make it easy to move. And then in reference to the coil itself, you can see where it pokes out. That is as high as you can go and still make an actual connection. So I feel that first bump and then I screw in my thumb screw. We got the Power Queen battery powering the Yaesu FT100D. I'm just taking this out on its first voyage, trying to make some contacts with it. K9 D, BV and others listening. Kilo Mic 9 Golf, portable. Uh, the portable station uh, come again a little slower. Kilo Mike 9 Golf. Okay, Kilo Mike 9 Golf. That's a new one for me. Uh, what's the name and location? The name here is Steve, and I am in Wisconsin. Uh, what you running portable there, and what are you using for an antenna? I am running the Wolf River Coils, and the radio is the old Yezu FT100D. Okay. Well, you're sounding fairly good here in Janesville. Sounds like it's working pretty good. Well, so that is the Wolf River Coils set up, and I'm going to try it again with the 17-foot whip. I'm not really happy with the way that this 6-foot whip is working. It seems like it's extremely tight, and that makes it a little more difficult and a little less fun to use, but it's still a fun-to-use antenna.